Before we get started on this podcast, let's just do a quick review of what we've been talking about um, and making sure that you're having your periodic table out during this podcast as well as writing notes in your Nobo that was um, handed out in class. So let's go. Ionic compounds. We said that there were two properties to ionic compounds. One was that it was a metal bonded to a non-metal. And the other one was that, unlike covalent compounds, these ones had a transfer of electrons. Now, the covalent compounds, remember, had a sharing of electrons. So in the last podcast, we broke down how to name ionic compounds and how to write formula for ionic compounds. So in naming ionic compounds, you name the metal first, then you name the non-metal. And on the non-metal, this is where you're going to drop the ending. So ending... Um, add IDE to the ending. So examples would be like lithium oxide, sodium chloride, magnesium phosphide. In the formula we're going to be looking at, remember we did two ways of determining the formula by balancing the equations. One we did a teeter-totter saying the amount of positives, the metals, needed to be balanced out with the amount of negatives, the non-metal. The other way we did it was we made a table and we said that what we write in the positive column needed to be, so these were the positives, these are the negatives, the positive column needed to be balanced out with the negative column so that when the totals of the I, amount of ions was added together that it equaled zero. So now we're going to add on to that lesson of ionic compounds and we're going to be looking at ionic compounds that contain multivalent metals. So what does that mean? That means these metals have more than one ion form. So here's an example. If you look at the periodic table and find manganese, manganese has one, two, three possible ion charges. The most common one is usually listed at the top. So how we're going to be able to differentiate um, which of these are multivalent metals and which are just the regular metals that only have one ion charge is when we're naming them, they are going to include a, include a Roman numeral. So if you remember Roman numerals, here are the Roman numerals listed for each ion charge. So positive one is given just this a one or an I. Um, positive two will be two. Here you'll notice that five is a V, so this is one before the five, which is a four, and this is one after the five, which is a six. So you should become familiar with what the symbols for those Roman numerals are. So let me give you an example. If I was to write this out, um, and it would be based off of the formula, it might look something like this. So if iron was used, and in my formula I could determine, which I'll show you how to do, um, that it was the iron that had the positive 3 charge, I would call it iron 3 chloride. Let's use the manganese as an example. So manganese, and let's say it was the 4 here that was used. So manganese 4 um, phosphide for example, that we would call this. So the met non-metals, those endings still say the same as I'd. The only thing new we're adding on are these Roman numerals that are listed after the metal that is a multivalent metal. So let's start at looking at uh, how you write the chemical formula when you are given a name. Now this one is pretty easy um, because it, the only thing it adds is it's showing here you it's showing you here the Roman numeral that's already listed. So manganese three means that manganese, uh, the ion used here, is positive three. And sulfur, it only ever has one ion charge. So you'd look on the periodic table, you'd see that the symbol for sulfur is S and its charge is negative 2. So this is where we're going to go back to what we've already done. We need to balance these charges. So I'm going to write my positives in this column and I'm going to write my negatives in this column. So here's sulfur. So right now I can see when I add these up, a positive 3 does n is not the same and not equal to 0 when I add them together. So I know that I'm going to have to add on more. And so when looking at this, if I add on another sulfur, add on another sulfur, now I'm at negative 4. Well, that still doesn't balance out with my charge of positive 3. So let's add on another manganese. Now I have a total of plus 6 for my positives. When I'm going to add that to 
Well, I can see here I still have a negative 4, so that's not going to quite work. But hopefully you can see that when you add that another sulfur ion on, now you have a total of negative 6. When adding those together, those will equal 0. So again, writing the formula for this, I'm going to write my symbols down first, so M, N, and S. Now I need to determine how many atoms were written um, when trying to balance out those charges. So in manganese, here's one, and here's two. So there was two manganese, and here is one, two, three sulfurs that were written, and so there's manganese um, two, sulfur three. So MN2S3 is the chemical formula for manganese three sulfide. So I'm going to do one more example with you, and then I'm going to get you to try one on your own. So if we are looking at tin two iodine, this two here means that tin, and if you look on the periodic table, tin symbol is SN. It's ion charge that is used in this chemical formula, in this compound, is uh, the plus two. Iodine has a charge of negative one, and so when I'm going to try to balance out these charges, I know my amount of positives are going to have to add together to my amount of negatives in order to equal zero. And so if I add on another iodine, I now have a total of negative two on the negative side, and that one tin already had that charge of plus two, so yes, I can now see those charges are balanced. So again, your chemical formula, let's write down the symbols of the two elements that we're dealing with, S, N, and I. There was one tin here, so I don't include ones in chemistry, so I'm not going to include the one there, and there was two iodines here, and I'm going to put the two there to show that there was two iodines for every one sulfur in balancing the chemical formula for tin two iodine. Okay, now that we've done gone through two examples, I'd like you to pause the video and try to solve lead two sulfide for yourself by writing its chemical formula. Okay, I just want to introduce a bit of a shortcut, a pattern that you can find um, when writing um, the formula for ionic compounds. I'm hoping that in these three examples that you will see a pattern. I'm just going to outline the pattern here for you. Do you see the pattern? We call this pattern cross, drop, and here's the key to add on to. You can use this rule as long as you reduce in the end. So we call this a cross, drop, and reduce. You're going to cross the charges over to the other atom. You're going to drop them down and as well as drop the ion charges and then you need to reduce. I'm not going to spend too much time if you don't see this pattern because I'll go through it with you a little bit more tomorrow because the table method and the teeter-totter work just great. Let's look at another example. Here's lead and sulfur. I'm going to take those values, drop them down, which would lead to Pb2S2. I can use that rule as long as I reduce. Both of these numbers can be divided by 2, and so therefore, my chemical formula should be PBS, and there's no ones included in chemistry, so therefore, it is just PBS as the chemical formula. Okay, so give the cross, drop, and reduce method a try for vandium 4 oxide. Come back and check your answer when you think you have the correct answer. Okay, so writing out the symbols for vandium and, and oxygen. Vandium is a charge of plus 4. Oxygen has a negative 2. So when I cross those down, and when I cross them and drop them down, I end up with V2O4. Both of those numbers can be divided by 2. So when I divide them by 2, which is reducing it, I end up with VO2 as the chemical formula. Okay, so we just did writing the formula of ionic compounds containing multivalent metals. Now we're going to talk about how do we name compounds containing multivalent metals, which said in another way is how do you determine which ion charge was used? How do you determine which Roman numeral to use? So whenever you're given an ionic compound, your first job is always to ask yourself, is this metal a multivalent metal? So you need to look up on the periodic table. Find Fe. Fe is iron. And you're going to have to look to see how many ion charges are present. And so you can see, yes, that iron does is a multivalent metal. And so looking at that periodic table, you can see that iron, my choices are iron as a plus 3 ion or iron as a positive 2 iron. 
ion. So I need to determine which one I'm going to use. So I'm going to go back to my table method. This is the column in which I'm going to write all my positives. This is the column in which I'm going to write my negatives. If I look back to the chemical formula listed in the question, I can see there is one iron and there are three chlorine chlorine atoms. So I'm going to write chlorine three times because I know my chemical formula, that's how many it tells me that there are. I'm going to write iron once because it shows me in the chemical formula there's only one atom of iron in, uh, in this um, compound. And so I know when I add these two columns together they must equal zero. So now the important part to look is at the nonmetal because nonmetals never have multiple ion charges. They only have one. So find chlorine on your periodic table. What charge does it always have? Hopefully you can see that it had a charge of negative, negative one. So when I add those that column up of negatives, it means I have a total of negative three. So my question is, what did this need to be in order to have that balance out those charges? Well, there's only one iron. And so therefore I can see that this needed to be positive three in order to add those two numbers to equal zero. So this one iron needed to have a charge of plus three. That is the ion that is used in this compound. And so therefore, I write the formula. I start off with iron, and I leave a space to include my Roman numerals. I change the ending of my nonmetal to be IDE, as usual we do in ionic compounds. And then that's when I write my Roman numeral. So it's iron three chloride. Let's walk through another example. So I have TIF4. My first question, look up on the periodic table and figure out if Ti titanium is a multivalent metal. When you look on the periodic table, you can see yes. My choices are either a plus four or a plus three as an ion. So again, I'm gonna write out how many atoms there are in my table. So I'm gonna write fluorine four times because in the chemical formula, that's what it tells me how many fluorine atoms there are. I'm going to write titanium once because in the chemical formula it shows that there's only one titanium um, atom. I know that fluorine, looking on the periodic table, always has a charge of negative one. So my total for my negative column is negative four. I know that this column therefore must be equal to plus four. And since the formula told me there's only one of them, that means that one titanium must have that charge of plus four. So therefore, my writing my naming my chemical um, for, naming the chemical compound TIF4 will be titanium four fluoride. Keep paying attention to that ending again. Okay, I want you to um, try this example on your own. Pause the video and come back and check your answer. Okay, so looking at determining the chemical formula for COP, I can look up CO on the periodic table and determine my choices are a plus three, two ion or a plus three ion. So again, I'm gonna make my table. I'm going to look at this phosphorus. This phosphorus only has a charge of negative three. So therefore I know my positive column must be equal to positive three. Therefore that one cobalt must have an ion of positive three to balance that phosphorus that had a negative three. So in naming my chemical formula, it's going to be cobalt three phosphide. I hope you got the right answer. Okay, one more. Try this example again and come back and check your answer. Okay, so step one, look on the periodic table, find PB. PB is lead. Your choices are plus four and plus two. So now I need to determine which Roman numeral am I using. Am I using a four or am I using a two? So again, back to my table. I know the addition between the positive column and the negative column has to equal zero. I'm going to write in how many atoms of each exist within the chemical formula. There are two bromines and one lead. I know that bromine, looking on the periodic table, has a charge of negative two. The addition of that column will be negative two, which means my positive column has to be positive two in order for this to equal zero. So looking at that one lead, it must have had a charge of plus two in order to balance out with the two bromines. So the um, ion that's used is plus two, and therefore my naming this chemical compound is lead to bromide. So that's the end of our vodcast on multivalent metals. Um, please be ready to show your notes and do some more practice to make sure that you understand this material tomorrow.